For this episode, we shall discuss cash flow, its definition, importance, composition, and related subjects for better appreciation of our topic. We shall show you Sarah's mini mark cash flow statement as an example. The cash flow statement is one of the four financial statements of an organization or a company. This statement shows the business activities the company has undertaken and the external sources where its money or cash inflows are coming from and how a company spends its money or cash outflows, such as payment of its debt obligations, operating requirements, as well as its investing activities, if any. There are two forms of accounting methods that determine a company's cash flow, the first is accrual accounting and the other cash accounting. Accrual accounting is the method where revenue is reported as income when it's earned, whether or not payment has been received by the company, and expenses are reported when incurred, whether or not it has been paid by the company. This method is used by public companies and preferred by most of the non-public companies. Cash accounting is an accounting method in which revenues are recorded during the period the payments are received, and expenses are recorded in the period in which they are paid. Hence, when the purchase of goods for sale is on cash and the sale of said goods is on credit and both transactions transpired within the same accounting period, there is actually no matching of revenues. Because the cost of merchandise sold is already recorded having been bought on cash but the revenues are not yet recorded because payment is not yet received. It is for the lack of matching the revenues with the cost that the cash accounting method is not preferred or used by most companies. Take note that earnings are net income and cash flows are two completely different terms. Earnings happen in the present when goods are delivered or services are rendered and expense happens when incurred under the accrual accounting method but cash inflows and outflows can occur at a later date. It is important to understand this difference when managing any business payments. A company that is profitable is good, however, if the receivables become past due or remain uncollected for a longer time, the company could run into financial problems. For example, a grocery store may run out of enough money to buy additional goods for sale after selling on credit, almost all, if not all of its goods, if and when those receivables remain uncollected for a longer period. On top of their historical statement, most companies with limited funds, usually, prepare a projected cash flow statement for longer accounting periods like monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, and annually to proactively manage their cash requirements for smoother continuity of business operations. The company's historical and projected cash flow statement shows at what point or period the company might probably experience a dip or negative cash flow if that be the case. The projected cash flow statement serves as a useful tool for business owners or managers to arrange in advance or in time for a loan or additional partner's investment in anticipation of their future operations funding requirements. In preparing the cash flow statement, always remember that increase or decrease in the asset accounts in balance sheet has an inverse effect in the cash flow statement, otherwise stated, an increase in the assets must be subtracted or taken up as a cash outflow, while a decrease in the assets must be added or taken up as a cash inflow. The reason for this is because it is assumed that when the company's assets are increased, cash is used to acquire it, hence, taken up as a cash outflow. And when the assets are decreased, the assumption is there is a receipt of cash that transpired in exchange for the asset, hence, taken up as a cash inflow. Whereas, increase or decrease on liabilities and capital accounts in the balance sheet has a direct effect on the cash flow statement, meaning, an increase in liabilities and capital must be added or taken up as a cash inflow while a decrease must be subtracted or taken up as a cash outflow. The assumption here is that when the liabilities or capital accounts are increased there is an assumption of cash receipt, hence, taken up as cash inflows, while in case of a decrease, it is assumed that cash payment was made, hence, taken up as a cash outflow. Due to space constraints, I shall be showing you, in two parts, the cash flow statement of Sarah's Mini Mart or SMM for short, for the month ending September 30, 2020. This is the first part of the company's cash flows and as you can see, it starts by showing the net income or loss, in this case, followed by the three classifications of its business activities, namely, operating, investing, and financing activities. Take note that SMM's operating activities generated net cash inflow amounting to $7,715.83. 
This is the sum of total addition of $14,861.11, total subtraction of $5,303.33, and a net loss of $1,841.95. This is the second part of SMM's cash flow. The upper section covers cash flow from its investing activities amounting to $8,600 net cash outflow. Next, on the lower section, is the cash flow from its financing activities amounting to $1,000 cash inflow representing the proceed of loan from the bank. The legend below will serve as your guide in determining the sources of the data or amounts reflected in the cash flow statements, which, except for the net income, depreciation and amortization are all balance sheet accounts. Take note that the amounts as shown in this balance sheet are reflected in full in the cash flow statement because this is the first accounting period of the company. The amounts to be reflected in the succeeding cash flow statements will comprise only of the increase or decrease in the amounts of each of the account titles every accounting interval.